Ishwaraya Kale 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 Ishwaraya Shiva Shiva Sarveshwaraya Shambha Shambha जो 
तू है लड़ रहा मौत का बढ़ रहा कारवा तेरे हाथों से ही जग का आशीष है तेरा जीवन तेरा न रहा इस पथ पर चले नारू के नारे विश्व तेरा रणी हो गया सूरज की करा तू अखंडित रहा तेरा जीवन ही है प्रेरणा समर्पण को तेरे प्रणा समर्पण को तेरे Namaskaram to everyone. So, that's our gratitude to all the <coughs> men and women across the world, consciously risking their lives for everybody's well-being. When, uh, when the health ministry in India offered uh, double salaries for all nurses and doctors, they came out and refused. I think of over hundred thousand deaths in the world, over five thousand have been of medical professionals. <clears throat> Here is a little poem for you, it's called Shameless. A peacock with his magnificent plume, a masterpiece of color and form, without compare, has to let out high-pitched calls to get attention to his immense beauty. Living in this world that is distracted beyond words and clueless of the many rewards of keenness of attention, 
in challenging times that we are, if you have something of value that could benefit life in smallest ways, stand up and shout shamelessly. Well, tomorrow morning, ten o'clock, the Prime Minister is addressing the nation with whatever policy shifts that will be made for the coming few weeks. A few states have gone ahead and anyway announced a full lockdown. That includes Tamil Nadu, where Isha Yoga Center is. So, as far as we are concerned, we continue the lockdown till 30th of April. In the rest of the country, will there be small relaxations for certain type of activities or not is something we will know by tomorrow. I think there will be because it is harvesting season in certain parts of the country in the north. So, there could be relaxations for that and also there could be relaxations for certain manufacturing segments that partial operations of industry, they wanted to start so that uh, post... post-April, they will be able to get fully into production stage. So this is like a, a small step in the direction. Uh, but everything is uh, still fluid and up in the air because uh, subject to the mood of the virus and uh, how responsibly uh, all of us behave. Because how much load will be on the nation and the world and the infrastructure, the medical infrastructure that is in the world, largely depends on how responsibly we conduct ourselves, how effectively we ensure that the virus doesn't come to us. Even within Coimbatore city, certain areas have been completely shut off, totally. Certain areas have been blockaded because uh, they found some cases and uh, they're responding like this, which is the only way to do. Fortunately, still the number of people infected and also the number of fatalities is uh, very much in control in India and also the curve is little bit flattening out, the effect of lockdown is showing. Fortunately, even in United States, the fatalities have kind of flattened out. It was two thousand a day, it's kind of come down a little bit, but the number of infected people, the number of people in ICUs, that number I think has gone up. So, uh, we still don't know which way it's going. Because these are large countries, India, United States, these are very large countries. What happens uh, in one... you know, it's like compared to many other nations, every state is like a nation. So, uh, in United States, you can say there are fifty nations. In India, there are about twenty-five... Na twenty-eight nations in terms of states, because the population and the geographical space is such that uh, we cannot really look at Mm, what to say, the numbers for the entire nation right now, I think whatever is happening in United States, maybe I'm not clear about the numbers, but at least fifty percent could be just from New York State. The rest of the country may not be going through the same thing because there is substantial geographical distances and if people behave responsibly, it can be contained where it is. So, here we are and uh, <clears throat> this, uh, this situation should not go waste. So many people's lives gone, that should not go waste. So many have died, over hundred thousand people have died. We should not let this go waste, we must use this time. There's another sixteen to seventeen days in here, 
in India and for all of us. As I said earlier, <clears throat> every one of us should strive at least ten percent upgrade in who we are, physically, mentally, emotionally, in terms of our competence of what we are doing. Ten percent upgrade, the whole world will be a better place to live, believe me. If everybody becomes ten percent better than who they are. And uh, well, in the spiritual communities this exists, but if everybody takes this on every year, you take two or three weeks off for an upgrade for yourself, physical, mental, emotional and uh, competence upgrade, if you do for yourself consciously, this may be happening without being very conscious about it in, in the process of one's work and life. But I'm saying a conscious break just to upgrade yourself, if everybody takes this, I think in a few years, uh, we wouldn't regret this pandemic because we will have a much better humanity and that's the only way forward. So the losses that we have taken in terms of life, the losses that we will take in terms of uh, economic losses and the number amount of social disruption that will happen out of this, we must compensate this with upgrade of human lives because ultimately that's all that matters to us. I think there are questions. Hmm? This question is from Prashant. Namaskaram Sadhguru. While we are alive with this body and mind, we keep on accumulating karma. I want to know when we lose our body and mind, is it better time to handle karmas? Is he infected? No. <laughs> well, There are many of you out there, uh, I'm just thinking how uh, to set a context for this because this question involves too many things. To put it simply, to put it very simply, <laughs> when you put something very simply, there could be loopholes. If any of you who are watching online, if you find a loophole, come back with a question tomorrow, we'll continue this karma business. If you do not know this, uh, just... Yes, just there's another two, three hours of work for me uh, to complete the karma book which will go into publication in United States and rest of the world. <clears throat> so this has been on for more than a year and it, it should be complete in the next few days. So, what is karma? See, karma is the information or the memory which happens at various levels, which makes you who you are. You are who you are only because of the karmic memory that you carry. Then when did it become a problem? It became a problem because you got identified with that memory. Like even now in your life, only way less than one percent of your memory are you really conscious of. Over ninety-nine plus percentage is existing in you unconsciously. To what extent means? Well, in spite of all kinds of efforts, you will see the memory within you plays out in its own way genetic memory, karmic memory, right from childhood, every small thing. Like for example, let us say uh, yesterday uh, you ate a meal and uh, this doesn't happen at the yoga center, but let us say you're somewhere else and uh, you opened your meal and there you found a live cockroach or a mouse or something. It happens in some places. Well, today, if we offer you a meal, that memory will make you behave in a certain way. And this memory may make you behave in a strange way every time a meal is served to you. So the more you get identified with that one experience, you have eaten 
I don't know how many. Let's say you lived for fifty years and you ate three meals a day, how many is that? 365 into 50 into 3, whatever that is, uh, that many meals you have eaten. Everything was fine, just one meal, you had something wriggling in your food. Now that will dominate. Every time you served a meal, that memory comes back and after some time it's not even a conscious memory, you're just careful about it. So this is what memory does to you, after some time you're not even thinking about it, it will make you behave in strange ways. I'm saying that's why you all are such strange creatures, because the various kinds of unconscious memories making you behave in particular ways. So this entire dimension of karma becomes significant on the spiritual path because you're looking for transformation. To transform means to change the very shape of who you are, to make yourself in such a way that your shape is of least resistance. The shape that you have taken is such, it will allow you to pass through life and death effortlessly. You have taken on that kind of a shape which will become available to the process of dissolution naturally. That is the kind of shape you're trying to take. So you're trying to transform, that means you're trying to take on a different form than the way you are. Your present form is a consequence of very complex amalgamation of memories which have come to you through five senses, which have come to you through genetics, which have come through you, come to you through evolutionary process, there are various dimensions, eight dimensions of memories are there, all these are in one way karmic. Though we call a particular memory karmic because that is an active process, let me not go too much into technicalities, as I said, if you've managed to find gaps, tomorrow question you can ask. So now you're trying to change the form of who you are, the very way you are. The person that you are, that is essentially you're trying to make yourself into that kind of a person who does not become an impediment in your process of liberation or dissolution. Right now, if you have strong sense of I am this, I am that, then you yourself are a impediment, you yourself are a block, you don't need any external help, you're on self-help. So spiritual sadhana means just this, you're trying to make yourself into that kind of a form where you are not an impediment. There are other issues with the creation which we have to deal with. This is the significance of sitting with a guru that you only have to deal with your own issues. The existential issues, he will deal it… Uh, he will deal for you, that's what it means. The existential dimensions which are not in your consciousness, which are not in your experience, that is what he is supposed to deal with. He is not here to give you a uh, psychiatric advice on a daily basis, Sadhguru, I am feeling like this, what to do? Sadhguru, this is happening, what to do? I am not getting along with the person in, you know, my roommate, I can't get along, what to do? He is not here to address that, unfortunately he does this one. Just because I am sitting on a couch, people have mistaken me <laughs> And they keep asking psychiatric questions all the time. No, those are things you are supposed to deal with, you've been given tools to deal with that. Inner engineering is just a tool. If you implement it today, one hundred percent, you will see this is the end of your psychological problems. Yes, Sadhguru, I did in engineering but… Uh, it is but because you are not implementing it. You think inner engineering is a qualification like BA, BSc, MSc, PhD. I did inner engineering, I did Bhava Spandana, I did Hatha Yoga, I did Shunya, I did Samyama. But still Sadhguru, I have problem. 
that means we gave you some tools to tighten some screws. Instead, you're poking it in your nose and it bleeds. Yes. <laughs> yes, that's all that's happening. So, that part is not about dissolving your karma. That part is just facilitating that you are available to the process. To the real process that needs to happen, you are available for that. That's all you are supposed to do, to become available. Now, uh, what's his name? Prashant. Oh, Prashant. Uh, it has a… Sp the Prashant has a special significance for me because uh, you know the house where I grew up, my dad's place, my father's place was named Prashant, boldly written. So everybody used to sometimes uh, refer to as, as uh, oh, that Prashant family. So this Prashant <laughs> Prashant means always peaceful. So he's asking this question, shall I deal with these things after I'm dead? <laughs> Well, this happened. This happened uh, in a French university. The professor of history was explaining to the students that before the revolution, it was the law was so cruel to common people that if you stole a chicken, one hand would be cut for the first offense. Second offense, the second hand would be cut. Third offense, they would take your head off. So a student who was in the back seat, back bench, asked, how would somebody steal a chicken after both hands have been cut? <laughs> so, <laughs> you lost your body and you lost the discerning mind. Now, how do you handle your karma? The most significant dimension of your present existence, hmm? even if you have the infection, you're still alive to ask the question. The significance of this aliveness is, you have a discerning mind. I want you to understand this. This is the most significant dimension of being human, that you have a discerning mind that you don't have to react instinctively like other animals do. You can think through the issue and respond the way you want, no matter what your instincts say. So once you have lost this with the process of death, then your ability to handle that is uh, over. You cannot handle anything. You just function only by tendencies. See, just some time ago all these leaves were dry and falling down, now all the fresh leaf has come. Even a dry dead leaf is going somewhere, but it is not deciding where to go. Where the wind blows, it goes there. That's what you will become when you're dead. You will not decide where to go, it's only now. It is now when you're alive, and you still have a discerning mind working, even if it is partially working, still you have a discerning mind. Now you can decide where to go. This privilege of where I sh my life should go, this privilege will be taken away the moment you have lost your body and your discerning mind. One must know this, this is the value of being human. When you were a monkey, you did not have a discerning mind. When you were a reptile, you did not have a discerning mind. Now that you become a human being, no matter what sort you are, you yes, Sadhguru, but I am… Uh, whatever sort you are, you have a discerning mind. You may not be using it, you may be storing it to use it post-mortem, you know. I'm saying you will not have it, this is the only period where you can use it. This is the only period where you can navigate your life where you want. Beyond this, it is only by tendencies, other forces will decide. Well, 
Sadhguru, can you fix it? If I die, will you fix all my karma? No. If you have dissolved it to a point where the shell has become very thin, then yes. Otherwise, uh, we can bless you uh, to come back in a... Um, you know, as a... as a mouse in a rich granary, where there's a lot of food. No, I'm just being cruel, just like that, you know. <laughs> because I want you to understand that to make any intervention existentially relevant intervention, not telling you advice, not giving you teaching, proper intervention, a life must be at an appropriate place. Otherwise you just cannot intervene, nobody can, I'm telling you. But if one has strived, brought it to a place where there is minimum amount of stuff, that it's become fragile, now it would roll on forever, when I say forever, because time is... the way it is playing out right now, the time, is only because of your physical body you have such an experience of time. This darshan instead of being uh, forty minutes, suppose... no, this is not a good time to say this. Uh, suppose you did not have a body. I will make you sit here for four million years. What is the problem, I'm asking? It would be about the same. Forty minutes, four million years or forty million years would be the same thing for you. Because there is a body, time has become a certain... of certain relevance. This is the reason why when moment of death comes, people are always trying to create a peaceful, loving or joyful atmosphere for the person to pass because if he leaves in that condition, once again, as you have all noticed, on a certain day if you're depressed, one day feels like ten years, another day if you're very joyful, one day feels like ten minutes. So we want to make sure the one who is departing lives in a pleasant condition so that he won't feel the length of time. He will not suffer that condition because it's just passing away like that. This dimension of life, when it has lost its physical body and its discerning mind, still has other aspects. How actively simply depends upon how... how much are you identified with your karmic substance. If you're strongly identified, it will continue to function even beyond the body. But if your identity is low, then it is very mild, which can easily be dealt with. What this means is, when you are identified with your karmic process, that means naturally life is longing to take on one more form. It is longing to take on one more form. You cannot intervene with that life. You just have to allow it, at the most guide it a little bit to take on a form that will be beneficial. But you cannot completely intervene with that life and end it or liberate it. So only that life whose identity with its own karmic substance is very minimal, that life you can intervene. So it's important what we are doing right now, will you live fully consciously? You may not. But if you live in such a state that things have been minimized, your karma has been minimized. It's, you're only working with the allotted karma. The accumulated karma or what is, uh, you know, the storehouse of karma or the warehouse of karma that you carry, that is not been handled yet. But that can be easily detached because you have no conscious identity with that. That can be taken away. Now, the karmic substance with which you have conscious identification right now, this is what I am, I like this, I don't like this. This is how you're establishing your identity with your karmic substance. If that is strong, 
you cannot simply intervene and break it. See, I did not make the policy for this life process, okay? <laughs> policy is made elsewhere. Intervention is a different dimension. This happened, a centipede. You know centipede with one hundred legs? A centipede got gout. Massive problem, one hundred knee joints hurting. Can you imagine? If you get gout, your ankle joint or your knee joint hurts, just two. Not so big. If you are a centipede, one hundred problems. So he went for advice to the wise owl. An owl is a wise bird everywhere else in the world, ex world except in India. In India, Wulu or Gube means you're a dumb idiot. <laughs> everywhere else in the world, an owl is considered a wise bird, so this was not in India. So the centipede went to the owl and asked, I have this gout in all my one hundred legs, what should I do? So the owl looked at him and advised, I think the best thing for you is to come as a creature. It's be best you come as a, a mouse, you'll have only four problems. You'll still have gout, but you'll have only four problems. Now you have one hundred problems, it'll become four, you will feel wonderful. It's happened to you, isn't it? You had so many problems, you did in engineering, uh, maybe half of them went away or maybe only four went away, I don't know what happened, or ninety-six went away. And you're feeling great, this means… this does not mean everything is gone. Only what you have allowed is gone, you need to understand this. What you allow is what leaves you. What you hold on to stays with you. So, the centipede thought about it and thought it's a good idea. Then he asked, how do I become a mouse? The owl said, no, no, we only make policy here. <laughs> Intervention, you have to look somewhere else. This is creation, it's only made the policy. Intervention, <laughs> you have to come to it in a certain way. So karma or the karmic substance is such that without it you cannot exist. But if you're overly identified with it, every step you walk you will pick up more and more. It's just like your identity is like glue. Let's say you smeared yourself with glue and you walk on the street. In ten minutes you would have collected so much. Now there is so many social distancing, so it's okay. Otherwise, you know, you touch somebody, you shake hands, you can't let it go. You hug somebody, you're finished. Just imagine in five days' time, what will be your condition? Everything that you touch stuck to you. This is what karma is, this is what is happening to one's life. Why that exuberant child that you were, so joyful and wonderful, <laughs> is simply because such a load, so all you have to do is don't try to shed the karma. Uh, the solvent is such that you take away the glue as much as possible. Tch. A few things still stick, but largely glue is gone. So even if it is there, it doesn't really stick hard. When the glue is really good, if we try to take it, skin will come off. Yes, if it's really stuck well, flesh will come off. If it is lightly stuck, we can… with little pain, you know, we can take it off. If it is not at all stuck, very easily we can just give you… put you under the shower. So you must be like that. By the time you die, whenever that is, you must become like this, that your glue has been taken away largely. Uh, if I just come and do like this, it must go away. Otherwise, we have to pull the skin and flesh that's not good for you, that's not good for me. I don't like to torture anyone, hmm? <laughs> So tomorrow uh, at uh, seven o'clock in the evening, 
எல்லா தமிழ் மக்களுக்கு எல்லாமே நாளைக்கு ஏழு மணிக்கு ஒரு கால் எல்லா வாலண்டியர்ஸ்க்கு நீங்கள் எல்லாம் இந்த கால் எடுக்கணும் உங்களுக்கு எல்லாமே வரும் நீங்கள் அப்படி உங்கள் நம்பர் டேட்டா பேஸில் இல்லைன்னா நாளைக்கு சாயந்தரத்துக்குள்ளே கொடுத்துடுங்க நான் உங்கள் கூட பேசணும்னு விரும்புகிறேன் அட் செவன் தேர்ட்டி வி வில் ஹேவ் அ கால் வித் ஆல் த வாலண்டியர்ஸ் இங்கிலீஷ் ஸ்பீக்கிங் வாலண்டியர்ஸ் அக்ராஸ் த வேர்ல்டு ஓகே ஓகே திஸ் இஸ் நாட் டு மாரோ நாளைக்கு இல்லை நாளானுக்கு பதினஞ்சாம் தேதி ஓகே நியூ லாக்டவுன் டைம் ஸோ வித் ஆல் த இங்கிலீஷ் ஸ்பீக்கிங் வாலண்டியர்ஸ் அட் ஆன் ஃபிஃப்டீன்த் செவன் தேர்ட்டி ஃபிஃப்டீன் ஃபிஃப்டீன்த் ஆஃப் ஏப்ரல் செவன் தேர்ட்டி இன் த ஈவினிங் இண்டியா டைம் இண்டியன் ஸ்டாண்டர்ட் டைம் வி வில் ஹேவ் அ கால் வித் ஆல் ஆஃப் யூ Uh, if you think your number is not on the database of isha please make sure it is there i just want to talk to you for 15 20 minutes these are the kind of times where we need to speak so another two weeks uh, for sure in tamil nadu and probably in most of the country most parts of the country uh, similar things happening in united states Europe of course is partial different nations are acting differently but all of us should be ready for a certain amount of control on our lives not for two weeks we must be ready even if government relaxes the lockdown i want you to understand they are relaxing the lockdown because not because it's 100% safe for you if they lock down without end in sight it is not good for the health of the nations for that they're relaxing to save the nation they're relaxing not because it's 100% safe for you so you must continue to maintain a kind of personal lockdown on yourself only absolutely essential things you do continue the same level of alertness to ensure that you don't get infected this you must continue how long we don't know but definitely you must continue through the month of may 100% யோகேஸ்வராய பூத்தூத்தூத்தேஸ்வராய காலகாலேஸ்வராய சேவாய மகாதே 